Okay, I'd like to call a special joint meeting between the Iceford Village Council and the Iceford Downtown Development Authority to order. Um, and let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we need to do roll call. Who wants to do roll call? I'll do roll call for the village. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Here. Desarded. Here. Dolan. He's excused. Bailey. He would be absent, I guess. Okay. This is a easy roll call for the video. Desarded. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Nichols. Here. Sure. Here. Charles. Here. And Barna's excused. He sent me a text. <coughs> and Schultz is excused. He's uh, on vacation. Is that out? Okay. Approval of the proposed agenda. I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion by Nichols, supported by Frost. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Post same sign. And Evan, are you going to? Sure. Um, when you board it, it should be passed by both boards. Yeah, set the motion. Yeah, I'll say that. So why don't we, if you don't mind, we do so very few joint meetings. Why don't we have the DBA uh, approve the agenda and then the village council will do it. I again will approve the agenda. The support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Okay. 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 Council. Approve the agenda for the council. <coughs> Second. Okay, we have a motion by Hamas, supported by Frost. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. First, thank you all for coming tonight. Really appreciate you taking your time to come to this joint meeting of the village and the DDA. And we want to go over maybe a couple of house rules. Um, as I just mentioned, we don't do many joint meetings and we don't normally have um, a topic tonight that will uh, have so much interest. So um, when you are interested in asking questions, uh, you need to direct your questions to the chair uh, of the meeting right there. And she will acknowledge you. We took your name uh, and address for the record so that in the minutes we won't have to ask and interrupt. We are being filmed and taped, so um, one of the things you need to do, like me, is speak up uh, so that the tape catches you because the people who will get to see this afterwards will then only hear mumbling. So uh, project your voice a little bit. Um, tonight is 100% about the grant application that the village needs and the uh, DDA needs to submit to the Michigan Department of Transportation for the MDOT um, sidewalk and, and um, the, the area through town uh, that deals with that. So we are on a deadline. It is required by the end of October. And because there are monies involved, public monies, it comes to this board for deliberation. So again, if you want to, tonight is, it's not about how is M, uh, MDOT gonna construct it. It's not when are they gonna construct it. It's not are they going to, this is about the grant and the streetscape. We have uh, the DDA director, Glenn Pape here. We have Susan from uh, Grissom Metz. She is the architectural firm that put together a lot of our, our, not all, of our plans. And we got together as a task force. Um, we know this is coming. It's coming uh, in 19. 
<laughs> depending upon what MDOT's schedule is now, but supposedly in 19, we brought the previous plans and a lot of what had been discussed in the previous iterations of years <coughs> comments together along with some members of the DDA, some members of the village. But we also had the police department, we had the fire department, and we had the public works department. Because we didn't want to design a plan that couldn't be maintained. We didn't want to design a, a proposal of a plan that the fire department said, I can't do that. Um, I'll give you for instance, originally we had the idea of maybe elongated um, uh, um, Median. medians. And the fire department said, in the morning, southbound traffic is full. I have to go into the northbound lane just to get around them. And then I have to get back. So we can't have a continuous median. So we worked together to shorten the medians and have them at intersections. We wanted pedestrian crossings on the streets so that we you know somebody's gonna cross they're gonna cross anyway but let's give them a, a safer place to cross we wanted lighting so that people knew that they were coming into an area and I'm getting into Sue stuff so we worked as a team to come up with at least to the point where we got it tonight and so tonight that's what we're going for we're going to do a presentation to the boards they're going to ask us some questions and we will respond and then we will open it up to the public but this is also not the last time you're going to see us or this project and you're going to see us more this is just about getting to the grant application and then we'll be doing public outreach and business outreach as well Brian, anything to add? I'm just fixing. I'm just. Yeah. Any, did I miss it? Okay, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Tim. And maybe if I can, oh, one last thing. This is a joint funding effort between joint funding effort between the village and the DDA. We're working in collaboration together because it's such a large project, neither of us could do it alone. And we are working with MDOT, um, and this funding and the grant is through MDOT. One other thing to understand, it's also federally funded. And with federal funds and with state funds come lots of rules and lots of things we would like to do but they just don't let you do them. So we have to work within those constraints as well. Sue? Okay. Mm -hmm. Not, I'm technically challenged. So I'm just <coughs> checking in. So I work with Grissom Meth Andres. We're landscape architects. We've been working with um, the committee for many years, studying you know, the planning of what makes sense to work on your downtown, achieve the goals that have been out there for quite a while for your downtown. We have this awesome opportunity right now because MDOT is coming through and they are basically removing all the pavement from building face to building face in the downtown. What's great about it is because they're doing that, they owe us back everything they pull out. So we're getting monies back from them to build on. As we mentioned, we're gonna go for a grant then on top of that that MDAT has out there to add enhancements on top of what they owe us. So with that, we're trying to step back and look at our goals. We've been working with this task force of a wide cross section of everybody involved in your community to work with MDAT and get the best thing back we can from them. With that, um, on the left-hand side here is a study of the existing conditions of right now your roadway and your sidewalk. Working with MDOT, we met with them three different times as they're starting to work towards their engineering plans to say, wait a second, you know, what we'd like to do is improve the downtown so that we can have wider sidewalks. We can feel safer when we're walking on the sidewalks. We can try to abate some of the noise of all the trucks going through the town. So in doing that, we looked at how could we share the road and get it more even keel with pedestrians. So the existing, to kind of show you how the math works in existing, currently you have five lanes 
and they're proposing to keep the five lanes. But the five lanes today, each lane is about 12 foot wide. And now MDOT said we can come back and we can reduce the width to 11 feet for each lane. So that buys us out of five lanes, five more feet for sidewalks. In addition, we've got parking on the edge of the roadway. And that parking is sticking out in the lanes. If you've ever tried to park there, you feel uncomfortable parking and opening your door. MDOT said we can put the parking back but you will see later on a plan we can indent it and protect <coughs> it away from the, the traffic. And we can make that parking eight and a half feet wide. Currently, the parking is up to almost 10 feet wide. So we can gain another two feet for our sidewalks. So working with MDOT now, we have allocated seven more feet to walks. That was one of our goals. We're protecting the parking. And then as also mentioned, we've gone to them, can we have more lights? We want more crossings. People at the theater want to cross. They're going to cross wherever they can, and they're going to run across. They said, right now, we don't have the traffic counts to give another light, <coughs> but they're going to allow us to create these medians. So at least when you cross, and you'll see this later, you can get halfway across the street, stay in this uh, median refuge that's going to be protected, and then negotiate through the other two lanes versus trying to go across five lanes at a time. So this first story is just to show how we're lucky right now. We can reallocate the space, our goals, to more pedestrian uh, share than all just mostly vehicular. So this slide here, and there's two of them, and some of you were here earlier looking at some of the boards up close, is just showing the limits of our project. Uh, working with the funding, we're going to start, and this is the north side, right up in here, right past the Pollyann Trail. <coughs> the limits is the DDA there. The project's going to start there and carry all the way through south. Here's, we're calling this more of the core of the downtown, and continue on down to Minnetonka. But within the limits, we want to allocate our funding to uh, do improvements throughout the whole DDA. So up by the Pollyann Trail, outside we'll call the core, we're going to be adding those ornamental street lights you have in the downtown. We're going to move them all the way to the limits. We're going to add some street trees where we can. And MDOT also is giving us new sidewalks. When we get down to the heart of the area, and that's between like East Street and down to Stanton, we're doing more intense improvements related to the businesses. We're going to do some new lighting going to do new walks. We've got the wider walks now. We were mentioning about these medians here. One's here and one's here. How these medians become engineered later, they're going to get tweaked a bit. This is concept. This is rough <coughs> ideas, but they promise us that we can have a median with a marked crosswalk where people can cross, stay right in the median, and go across. The rest of the median, as we mentioned before, that'll be something that will be a mountable median for our fire and emergency vehicles can drive on. These might become shorter, who knows, but right now at least we get these crossings here and a crossing down here at East Street. I'm go to the next. And this is a continuation now. We're just going south and this is all within this DDA limits from here all the way down. This is Minnetonka here or the Village Marketplace right there. So the project that we've been working on with MDOT is within those limits. Now MDOT is working on the whole corridor, so the township is having their meetings with them as well. We're just talking about the areas that we've been working with them. So now this is looking kind of as a close-up, right at kind of a chunk of the downtown, what I'm calling the core, between East and Stanton Street, and at your main intersection at Burdick. To step back with our task force, through the summer, we've been getting ready for when MDOT gave us the layout of what they said they would design the road to, we've been working with the task force, looking and studying downtowns, saying, well, now we've got the chance to really brand it as downtown Oxford. The task force went to many communities, <coughs> scheduled as field trips, and on their own looking, we went to Milford. They went to downtown Farmington, downtown Northville. We talked to Birmingham, and then on their own, on their vacations, they just looked around and said, gosh, what town, what are the features we like? How do we maintain them? What's the cost of maintaining it? And really did a lot of studying. And then what is unique for Oxford? So when people come here, it doesn't look like downtown Farmington. You know, it doesn't look like downtown Rochester. So with that, this is again a concept plan of an idea that we thought of materials that we can maintain and still create a design. So the design was based off of 
this angle here at Burdick, where you can see these different gradations of gray. We, we thought the most durable materials for our area with the trucks and the traffic, and still to also kind of say we're land of sand and gravel capital, is to use concrete materials but to use them in different colors and different textures. So we looked at downtown Birmingham, if you guys have been there, they use exposed aggregate. So we met and talked with the DPW and that, how long have you been using it? What maintenance is required? Does it hold up? And that's like a puddly surface that gives a nice texture. You can have it in different colors and what. So we're showing these different bands of colors on an angle to again create a uniqueness. That's where we're at right now. This might evolve, but that's the idea. We've got wider areas here now. From the face of the building to the curb there, we've reclaimed a couple of the parking <coughs> places on, on site because if you park right there on site, you basically get parked in because of the back of the traffic. So we've created these nice nodes right at your intersection that are about 21 feet where we're proposing to have later outdoor furnishings where you could have a restaurant and outdoor seating because you want when people come in your town and there that traffic that's there sees that there's life in your town so we're trying to create places where we can add outdoor seating with plantings between the outdoor seating and the curb so you feel good there a, a noise abatement feel you know comfortable but create life on the, on the streets so I'm just going to go to the next one because it's easier to see so here's a blow up of what I was describing so we don't know right now what is the surface of the road that MDOT is going to give us. We think it might turn out to be concrete because that's the most durable for your trucks, especially when they stop. So if it turns out to be a concrete, for the crosswalk that you can see these colors will change and will flip up flat colors. If this is a light gray, then maybe your crosswalk will be a dark gray. But we're going to pick up a pattern that we can safely delineate your crosswalks and create some kind of a feature in the middle that's durable, can handle the plow, can handle all that with materials. We're proposing concrete and asphalt pavements right now. Down here on your sidewalks, you can see the stripes here. Here's that planting bed, and I've got a later drawing that will show you on the ground level walking in here. Here's an area where we've got some ornamental lighting and some concrete planters. Everything we're proposing is durable materials and a big scale. Because your downtown has tall buildings, historic buildings, wide walks, wide roads. So we're not, we're making sure everything is to scale. Okay. Looking at furnishings, this is just the start. We have not selected them, but the idea of the furnishings are in the pots. These are made out of concrete. They will hold up and get them any color that we want, different textures to them. When we, we need to do bike racks, this slide's a little distorted. It's kind of pulled vertically, I apologize for that. But bike racks, we need to have as part of the grant. We want to have it, the grant's all about pedestrian life. We would have racks where people would come into town, park their bike, not ride their bike through the town, park it, and then, you know, from the Pollyann Trail, from the neighborhoods. But these are very sculptural looking. What we're proposing, whatever is decided is, it doesn't ever become dated. You guys have been in towns where they pick certain colors and certain styles, and pretty soon you go, that was done in the year 2000, that way. We want to stay sculptural so that it's for all time. And you're just gonna, and everything we choose is gonna, again, build to the big picture of what your place is, so it tells a story. For furnishings, you know, like this is nice because it's only got two legs, for maintenance, for sweeping beneath, we're working <coughs> with the while plowing. It's also really very simple. It's kind of sculptural lines. That's metal, do we use metal, do we use wood? All that we'll figure out later, but we're gonna be going for a grant thing, we're gonna do benches, trash receptacles. These are called bollards at the corners. We're gonna put some type of a post far enough away, back from the truck tires when they turn, but to provide protection so when you're standing at the corner, you're not hugging against the wall of the buildings, you feel safe and then have maybe some directories and some furnishings. Later, the businesses can bring out movable table and chairs. We can add some color and some decoration. This is just a palette of ideas. We've not locked in, but for the grant, we, at least we need to quantify and, um, you know, and kind of show a flavor of what we're talking about, but we're not locked in. Right there, these lights right here, what we'd like to do, and you'll see on our rendering, is at the main intersection of Verda and of 
of Washington Street. We'd like to have some large scale ornamental, beautiful lights, quality, like the quality of your buildings. It's that transitional where we'll have something of quality that people see the historical significance and they can see the value of it. And those will be tall, so when you're parked at the intersection waiting to get through the light, you see this very large element of, of quality that makes you unique. This is a section, so this is cut right through, just to kind of show from the building over to the curb, the space that we are allocating now that MDOT has given us the layout for the road and the widths of these walks that are bigger. So this is at the intersection where I said we have more room. We always want to at least have a minimum walkway clear of seven and a half feet. This area here, as businesses come along and we can have some outdoor seating, we have about six feet left to get tables and chairs. If you've ever seen restaurants, they can do it in about four. We've got six feet. Then we've got this planting area here, again, to provide noise abatement protection away from the cars. And that planting area, we're calling it a landscape area, is about seven and a half feet. You see how we back it away from the road curve? Because we're dealing with all sorts of stuff next to the road between the slash of the salt. But this planting area is going to be curved. What you have right now, your trees that you have are in tree grades. They're not curved. The situation when you don't curb it with planting is we've got to make sure whatever we do, it's going to live. If you don't curb it, all that salt on your sidewalks, which we have to use, goes right into the trees and the tree grades. If we curb it, it reduces the amount of salt that you have. Salt's a friend and a foe, and we got to protect. So totally believe in curbing that. Another good thing about curb, with your kids or whatever, you're running, they're having fun, they don't pay attention when you don't have a curb and they run right through the plantings. So there's a lot of reason why we, whatever we use for planting, we want to curb it. This is another section. Now this is where it's tighter, where we've got the on-street parking. MDOT said they'll allow eight and a half feet for parking there. But we've got a, an amenity zone of about six and a half feet, but we're keeping that seven and a half <coughs> foot wide walkway there. This is illustrating those large concrete planters. Right now we want to make sure they're big to scale. The ones we are budgeting for, that we have to turn in a budget when we go for the grant. We've gone for concrete and the, they're about a 44 inch diameter. You can picture that's big, almost three and a half feet. By about 30 inches tall, about that tall. They're big, they're durable, and they will you know, last for all time. In the winter time, they're staying there. We're not moving them off. We've been working with the BBW, talking about how they plow and how they clean. You know, we're making sure we're replacing so they can work around. And you can shovel the sidewalks. That's the big thing that we've been talking back and forth on. And we'll have color in those. And then the light poles will be in downtown will be ornamental new ones. Right now in the downtown core area, we're talking about maybe having it with two heads on it. I'll show you around instead of one. And then we have that big five head at, at the corner. Outside of town, all the way to the DDA limits, MDOT is going to basically pay us. They have to pay us back for lifting up the lights that you own now and putting them down further outside of town all the way to your DDA limit so we can use their funding to, to move them. This is, this is better, now you don't have to try to understand what a plan looks like, but there is a rendering. We're looking at the intersection of Burdick and looking down Washington. Right here is what we're talking about for that big scale ornamental lights on the corners. The task force and Village have talked about replacing the existing lighting with mast arms and putting the signal lights on these mast arms. That's an upgrade that we will have to pay extra for. But we talked about reducing clutter and using those. This is kind of showing the indented parking that's protected now away from just not sitting out there on the street. This is a hint of these curved planters, some street trees. The bollards set back from the curb so that they are not hit. We're going to have it studied with MDOT. They'll study the radiuses of the trucks that are in the corners where you've got that angled intersection. But we do need something there just to, so you feel safe as you're waiting for the lights. This is a view right at the corner, and we're looking north. And the sidewalk is about seven and a half feet, like I told you. This is an area now we have room, ample room, six feet wide for outdoor seating. And then here's this curved planting bed 
the total distance from the curb to the other curb is about six feet. Then we have another foot and a half of clear zone away from the road curb. But we can get this nice feeling where you're a little protected in noise abatement, feel comfortable with the shade trees. The trees we're proposing will have the trunks up where you'll have clear vision underneath. When they come in, you'll have a height from the ground up of at least six feet before you even have any branches. Okay. Over time, as they get bigger, we'll elevate those branches so it becomes higher and higher so you're looking under the trees. And the trees that we're looking at right now are very durable, self-tolerant. People have asked me all, what trees, what trees, that's down the road. But there's something called hybrid elms right now we're investigating, very good for urban conditions. It doesn't have the rooting problems that the honey locusts have, not the little leaves people have been warning me about. But we'll resolve all that later. The plantings that we're proposing, salt-tolerant, they'll be in the wintertime, they're gone. They're all perennials. In the wintertime when the salt shows up, they're just gone. So then in the summer they can come back and they're very dirty. <coughs> Here's, here's another picture looking back. Now we're in the tighter area, and there would be the on-street parking. This is an, between this curve and here. We've got a total of six plus seven and a half, about 13 and a half feet. Seven and a half feet clear for a walk. And then occasionally you'll have those large planters and your light poles, and the light poles will have hanging pots on them also occasionally. So when you're driving through the town, you see some of this color up above too. So when there's cars parked that they might not always see that, they'll see it up in there. We're balancing how much plantings to use, because again, it's all about later our budget for maintenance. So we're trying to make sure that what we propose, we maintain well or forget it. And then this last um, slide is just talking about the funding for this, so you kind of can kind of follow it. Kept it really simple. I've got all the numbers in detail, how they total to these totals. But to keep it simple right now, the total budget is about a million nine for the whole project that we just showed you. A lot of the costs are all about lighting, you know, lifting up the lights, moving them. But what's great about and what's making this the time now to invest is MDOT owes us back everything they take out. So right there, it's about 650000 or more than a third of the cost. They owe us back. When they remove the sidewalk, they owe us back sidewalk. When they remove your brick pavers, they owe us back the cost of the brick pavers. We're not going to propose brick pavers back, but we get the money back for the pavers as a credit for some of the other things we want, the colored concrete, different look. So we're already starting with that much from them. Then the grant we're going for, we are going to uh, put in a third, 33%, about 260,000. MDOT, and we've been working with these grant um, coordinators, say that if we put in a third, typically the match will be two thirds, or two to one. So based on that, we're hoping to get a grant for about 525,000. So now we've got MDOT of 650, 525, it's a million whatever. There's 260 of our dollars, but then the last line item that makes up this total is 426,000. That's called non-participating items that the village has to kick in. There's certain items the grant won't cover. The grant's all about pedestrians and enhancements of the streetscape. They're not about vehicular things. So for example, we want to do those mast arms. The mast arms are all about vehicles. So if we upgrade it, we have to pay for that. Um, engineering fees, when they do inspections, my fees, all of that, they don't pay for the grant on that, so that comes from the village. Irrigation, we're just putting in 35000 towards it, but they don't pay for that. But that. So there's costs like that that we've got to still be aware of and it goes into the budget. All of this adds up to that total separate down here in addition, because it can't be counted in MDOT's project, but we know we need to be smart. We're holding a 10% contingency to have monies for. So when they do, things happen. You all know in your own construction that we've got some money, about $100,000, just to be prepared. When things happen, we've got some money so we're not just there, you know, making it. So I think that I went through it quickly. I hope I covered everything. If not, you guys feel free, but this is what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll open it up for council and DDA questions and comments. Mm 
Belgium? It seems like we had a conversation on uh, lighting as well at nighttime, special lighting, <coughs> ambiance. Yeah, so uh, Glenn, I wasn't going to bring that up, but what you're talking about is the special effect on the sidewalk. Right. Yes. Is that all right that I just That's share fine. that? Okay. So we want to make sure that um, this is unique. And one of the unique things I pre we presented earlier to the task force, I said, let's do some wows. One of the wows was those beautiful light fixtures at the corner. But another wow that we're talking about is called, it's called gobo lighting. It basically what it is is it's a projector that you can have up high. We can mount it on a building. We can mount it on light poles. We can mount it. And it shines down patterns on your sidewalk. They can be any color, they can be any pattern. It's very inexpensive. But you know how Rochester in, at Christmas time does their buildings? <coughs> it can be all year long in, in the summertime where you can put down beautiful patterns on your walks. And it's just one of those really <coughs> cool things at nighttime to just add special sparkle. Very affordable, no one else is doing it. You can customize it, any color shape patterns on the walks. So that's something we budgeted for, it's in our budget. It was just something that when we presented, they were just like, well, let's, let's keep that in our pocket right now. Um, maybe, you know, in your packet, we also set out some goals. I know the task force had some goals. We wanted to make the downtown more accessible to the pedestrian. Um, for all of you who have lived here many years, you all know the parking's in the back. Everybody who's lived here knows the parking's in the back. But for the 30 or 40,000 cars, they may not know that there's parking in the back. And you can park, and we want you to be able to walk. They say, well, if you're going to walk, people want it to be friendlier. You know, you're walking up against a road where people are doing 35, right? And the trucks are bouncing, and it's loud. Do you feel comfortable there? <clears throat> We wanted a plan that had you feeling more comfortable. We wanted noise abatement. We wanted some color. We wanted to present some life. Okay? Everybody who's ever been here knows, you know, you could be on the street and you're like, wow, there's not much going on here. But you walk into a restaurant and it's packed. Because everybody came in from the back side. And so we want to have as much life in the front as there is in the back. And so a lot of the plan is designed for pedestrian friendly, to give it a little bit of wow in the front, to be able to be maintained. I mean, there's no, there's no sense in having a multi-million dollar plan that you can't maintain. We already know there are trees, and the trees have leaves, but you have a, and they're going to take them all out. They're going all the way down. It's a full reconstruct. The trees are gone. So now you're going to have to replant put in a salt tolerant tree species that has now had 30 or 40 years of experience in other places of knowing that this survives this type of environment. And then with the pots and things, things in places where we can get our village public works to get in on the sidewalk. For everybody who knows, MDOT's gonna come through, they have a contract with, uh, I believe it's Oakland, County to do the snow plowing, right? They come through at 30 miles an hour, they shove all the snow and ice up onto the curb and onto the sidewalk. And then the village and the store owners come behind them and take it, try to get it out of there. But if it's too cold or it becomes icy, we play that battle, all right? So our whole plan had some goals and we are meeting those goals with this plan. And we're looking for that input from the boards and from the public um, to talk about it. We know it's a lot of money, but uh, MDOT is going to come through. There's no doubt about it. Whether it's 2019, 2020, they're coming through. They are going to go curb to curb, uh, to storefront to storefront. It's a full reconstruct. They are probably not coming back in any full force for the next 40 years after that. This is the opportunity to be ready for them to come. And the other thing, and I mentioned this earlier with the open house and to the press, I, I can't stress this enough. We will do all the planning. We, we will be in front of this. 
but the businesses and the residents are going to have to live through this construction. We don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah. We just have a general idea. Yet yeah. <laughs> we will work with them on that too. We know they're coming, but it's really important to understand for those businesses they are going to need pat patrons through the construction and after. And so we need to be cognizant of not only the residents, but the businesses <coughs> along the corridor. <coughs> so that's what our planning is all about. Matt? So Evan, you said 2019 or 2020. Do you know what it is? Uh, as of last week, it was 2019. As of this week, we're hearing 2020. Um, they sort of, the engineers that we work with, uh, they were saying that their bosses were looking at moving this back. And I don't know if we've got an official word, but we believe that official word is going to come soon, that it's probably going to get moved back to 2020, which we actually think is a good idea for us. It will give us more time to refine our plans. It will give us more time to do public outreach. But one thing is for certain, the grant is due October 30th. So second and next question is, uh, in the process of doing this, is there going to be some surveying of the buildings downtown where the property lines are and whatnot too? Yes. So building owners would know where their line is. Right now there's a lot of ambiguity about where those property lines are. Yeah. We need to do some more of that. We also have a right-of-way acquisition to continue. Um, the village needs some right-of-way, or MDOT needs uh, land adjacent to the road. It's called right-of-way. Um, in order to extend left-hand turn lanes in certain areas. What they will not do is get land Let's say I own land, CJ owns land, and sir, I, I forgot you. Ron. Ron owns land. I own the far side, he owns the far side, and he owns the middle. If I give it and you give it, but he doesn't, they can't do it. They need all three of ours to be able to extend it. That's how it works. So we are going through the process of working with the property owners with the state to acquire a right away to be able to do left-hand turn lanes of length so that people have a safe place to, to turn from and into. What are the sidewalks going to be made out of or constructed with concrete? Yeah, right now we're talking about concrete, colored concrete, and exposed aggregate to get those different bands that I showed you. That's what we're thinking right now. We've been doing homework, and that's really you know, durable, good to maintain. Not the pavers. Right. One, of the, one of the things that's very hard to maintain is pavers. Pavers in a winter environment heave and they sink. And one, those become trip hazards. Two, they're not handicap friendly. And three, they're just a nightmare to deal with in snow removal and ice removal. We, we would rather have a flat surface we would also like them to be slightly pitched back to the curb so that when it does warm up that one nice day uh, that we get per winter, it doesn't ice over. One of the things, too, in that regard, if you go to the villages in Rochester, that mall, is that the name of it, whatever it's called, they have those insets in the concrete. Does that sort of stuff work, too? Or is that part of the problem with uneven concrete? So, are you talking about where they have kind of like um, metal work inset right. in that? So, so you, we could do that. We could add that as another layer, which would be really cool. Uh -huh. that, that's my point. Yeah. Is it it yeah. doesn't seem to be overly expensive, but adds part of that wow factor. Exactly. And those are things that we can explore later. It'd be great. So the one problem with that surface treatment, though, in a high salt environment, is it does serve to capture the salt. The village of Rochester, the, the shopping mall, isn't an end route, and they have better control over their salt right. distribution. So. Right. Some trade off there. It, yeah. If I remember that, and I know that Entity has another project in um, Wisconsin, I think they provide, they do the maintenance, and so therefore their crews do the salting or whatever they're using. And so it is, it's in a, 
It's a, in a controlled environment versus... So maybe the opportunity to move it somewhere besides a sidewalk with a salt is. Yeah. And, and still go with that wow factor yeah, that we, Susan's we talking can, about, we right? We will definitely study it. It's a cast in concrete that right. actually has more density than just poured. But okay. we'll just study those things. That's key, as you've been hearing, is whatever we're doing, we're making sure the longevity, sustainability, and we can maintain it. So those are things we want to check into. Joe? Um, first off, um, Madam President and colleagues and uh, members of the community, um, I'd like to thank the staff um, for being way out in front of this and thank the DDA for being way out in front of this, um, having even um, allocated funds um, almost two years ago now uh, to this project. So uh, thank you for your leadership and wherewithal to make sure that we stay in front of this, whether it's 2019 or 2020. Um, uh, th there's obviously a process uh, that the staff has been aware of uh, and the committee, uh, the task force, uh, for those of you who don't know, is made up of business owners, um, appointed officials, staff members, et cetera, that represent virtually every portion of the downtown district. Um, so there's been a lot of minds around the table on this. And um, I, I love this. this the, the wow factor, uh, I think, is here. It's unique. Uh, it plays to the, the aggregate um, um, uh, resource that we have in this community. Uh, and not, little, yeah, we have a little history. Not only in, in color and, and, uh, and, and uh, material use, but, but even kind of that, the striations, if you will, you think about geological you know, layers. Um, so, so I really like that. I like that it is unique. Um, this is something, as we've seen in other downtowns uh, across the region, um, this is completely unique. Um, yeah, I think uh, it, not only within the region, but within the, the state as a whole. Um, so I commend everyone who has had a hand in this uh, and look forward to continuing the dialogue. Thank you. I have a question too. Um, Joe mentioned geological layers. Are there some contingencies for the building structures when this is going on? I know they have problems in different towns with the uh, construction. And <laughs> That's Glenn's. That's Glenn's? Glenn's baby. I think you're shoving that off to Glenn. Yeah, no, I think you teed it up for Glenn. Yeah. Uh, actually, he told me to say that earlier. So. <laughs> uh, actually, we're, we're in the process, as those on the DDA know, that we're getting our National Register Historic Place we're in process for that. Because of that, MDOT has to take additional precautions, which is an evaluation of all of the possible historic structures along this route. So there's going to be additional evaluations regarding construction techniques and, and what they can do without damaging the buildings. So it, it's helpful to have one federal agency on your side against the other federal agency. I would say one other thing, having lived through a large federal project, um, as we get closer, I would um, work with Glenn to have the property owners make sure they document what their property looked like before construction. Make sure you, they take photographs and dated photographs you know, and document it so they can show the before and the after. Um, all of these firms will have inspectors and things like that, but if you can show what it looked like and its condition prior to construction, and uh, if you show them a crack or whatever afterwards and date it, then they can make a claim. But that's very important, and it'll be part of the education that the village and the DDA has to put out. Yeah. To piggyback on what uh, Evan has said, um, MDOT does have a process in place where that is a requirement yes. uh, of their steps that mm -hmm. will be taken as well, where they will be surveying um, the foundations of the buildings. Uh, and I imagine, and, and it hasn't been programmed quite yet, but I would imagine that the DDA would probably be the, the, the point agency on liaisoning with those property owners and MDOT to ensure that that happens. And other communities that have been studied, Rochester, um, uh, Celine, and others, um, this was done where they took video photography and still photography of foundations on the interiors to ensure, really, it's a, it's a double-edged process in the sense that they want to keep those buildings safe, um, but they also want to kind of cover MDOT to ensure that um, you know, they aren't damaging things. Anybody else? 
Yeah. I have another question, if I may. Um, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and according to MDOT, this section of highway has not been reconstructed, completely reconstructed, down to the dirt since 1922. So um, I believe that even the, the rail tracks uh, are anticipated to be down the center. Um, has MDOT or the project committee studied uh, emerging technologies and how this streetscape uh, may respond to autonomous vehicles in the future or any other? <laughs> well, I, I know it's a big thing, but, but this streetscape will be with us uh, from you know 2020 and beyond. And we do know that uh, transit and automobiles and that technology is rapidly changing. So perhaps it's a question of MDOT of what technologies could be in place uh, to ensure that, that the lifespan on this uh, evolves with uh, the changing technology of our vehicles. We have had initial discussions with design engineers. We're still having ongoing discussions regarding lane layout and such, and that's all part of that had the initial mention of, of high-speed transit through this corridor. We haven't gotten to autonomous vehicles yet um, because the legislation is not fully in place for that. Sure. So, but our, our plan is to make this as a, a, a thoroughfare and a corridor that will function for as long as possible. So as, as we have the ability to address these issues with them not be and while I may not say that we are, we were thinking autonomous cars, um, we can certainly bring that up to them. One of the things that MDOT is uh, thinking about is a couple things. One, connecting the Pollyann Trail to uh, the Lake Orion uh, Paint. Pink Creek. Mm -hmm. Pink Creek. That trail, and then also upgrading the traffic signals um, and its ability to determine the depth of the left-hand turn lanes, not only on M24, but also on Burdick. So with the technology and the sensors, they can tell, are there three cars waiting in the queue for left, or is there six, or is there nine? And should the light be on for 12 seconds or 15 seconds to clear that depth? And then that, that type of technology is supposed to be put in. They're also linking Burdick with Broadway. Broadway. And then ultimately, they will also link it to Drainer. So with this, you get the new technologies, and you get Big Brother uh, uh, sensing <coughs> where you are. I, I can also imagine, and I saw a demonstration on this, What's probably a little bit closer than autonomous cars is the fact that uh, some companies are actually installing regulators in their vehicles, UPS and other things, that those vehicles do not exceed the speed limit. They're controlled by a device, and so they will not, if it's posted 55, they will only be able to go 55 they don't go over the speed limit. That technology is starting to um, be put into other vehicles, and we'll see how that plays out. So I don't exactly know how it works, sure. but I know I, I, I heard a demonstration. Sure. There are fleet managers, including municipalities, that are looking at installing in that in their own vehicles. Sure. And certainly, maybe a little bit of a tangent on my part, but. You know, we're hoping that this lasts another 100 years uh, or so. Um, so we want to be thinking about the future 40. when this is decided. Yeah. At least 40. Yeah. Yeah. Dorothy, or, so tying with what Joe just brought up about autonomous vehicles, are there any thoughts about charging stations for like Teslas or Volts or whatever else? Is that part of the plan too or not? That ca you know, that, that came up as part of the open house. We are going to now take a look at it. Um, those are not grant eligible. Yeah. So at this point, it's not part of the streetscape project. When we get to the position where we're evaluating other projects within the downtown, such as repaving parking lots and or reconfiguring a parking plan, that's when we will address those types of issues because MDOT is not going to want to put recharging stations on the thoroughfare of a major truck route. 
But in the backside, I can tell you that a, a charging station, today's dollars, anywhere from three to $5,000 per charging station right now. But it is something that the village and DDA should be looking at in its parking lots. What about a grant from Elon Musk or uh, Google? Do you know him? <laughs> uh, I can give him a call tomorrow. <laughs> We are pursuing any and all grants relating to this streetscape project. But if anybody does know Mr. Moss, <laughs> uh, maybe one other thing we are also um, looking at, you know, as part of this program, we are looking at other funding sources. Uh, we know that there are service organizations and large corporate businesses that operate in and around Oxford. We will be um, reaching out to them to see um, how we can work together um, to get the village and DDA dollars stretched a little bit uh, for the wow factor. Uh, we know there are some very good service organizations and one has already approached us with their interest. So. Wow, we will be filing with the board's approvals, filing for state grant money. We will also be looking for local dollars as well. Yeah. 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 Being we already talked about the future to some degree, uh, I wonder if you would just touch on what the plans are in case we don't have funding to complete everything in terms of future development. Well, you know, we, we've sat down uh, as part of the task force, and while at the risk of offending Sue's in here, you draw a pretty plan, and that's her job, and it's supposed to be functional, and we believe it's functional. The part that we don't know is the construction dollars and what we're going to get from the state. So one of the things that we did was we looked at the plan in its totality and started to talk about just that. What happens if you only get 90% funding? What happens if you get 80% funding? And we designed a plan that had scalability. Um, I don't remember all the numbers. Do we have 16 benches? Well, if you don't get full funding, do you get 14 or 12? We have 40 pots for plants. Maybe you start with 30. Um, the things you can't, you know, the things that you only have one of, like the uh, master, you have one. You either do it or you don't. But the scalability is what we're looking at. And what we were also very concerned with, and it's going to sound like a theme, is maintenance. Putting out several hundred thousand dollars of anything, but not being able to put it, have any money to plant in those in those planters or maintain them or you know they just die because of salt that's not a great plan so we were looking at those things and i think that with susan's experience and glenn's experience and others with the dda we will be able to scale it correctly and improve upon it as time goes on and i would think that it'd be incumbent upon these boards to keep that in mind that this is not a one shot it is a living entity that has to be maintained and thought of and refreshed from time to time i'd like to add one little bit to that we set this up to be a framework so as the village and the dda's fortunes grow we can invest more in our downtown as needed so that we planned for this infrastructure so that we have the opportunity for growth as, as we get economic development in the corridor. So we've made it scalable both down in case of funding crunches, even though we do have a significant amount of contingency. We've also built it so that it's added, we can add onto it mm -hmm. in various areas as we discover where it's needed going forward. Mm -hmm. So it's become a very yeah. segmented plan in terms of growth or the other thing that we are doing is we're asking MDOT to extend the conduit uh, for the electrical for the streetlights. Um, and it sounds wonky-ish, and it is, but 
because they are going to have the street and the sidewalk torn up, we want them to put the infrastructure in so that when the village decides <coughs> to put a street light out somewhere, you're not paying ten thousand dollars to you know just to do the electrical for the street light. It's already buried in there, and now you're just paying for the cost of the of the um, base and the light pole itself. And so it's scalable. The other thing we're looking to do is, as we mentioned earlier, is extend those lights out to the DDA's limits. Again, by design, we want people to understand when you are coming from north to south, you are coming into a, 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 an area that's densely populated. You're not doing 55 miles per hour anymore. This is a place with lights and narrowed in road you're supposed to slow down and carry that through to the south end of town out to marketplace. And then when you get back a little further to the south, then the lanes open up a little bit because there's no businesses there. But that's by design. And you're looking, and now you have a couple uh, vacant parcels or underutilized parcels. They're going to have the lights in front of them. They're going to feel a part of downtown, a part of of Oxford, not just out on the fringes. Go ahead. That last comment I think is pretty good because I've heard from people on those fringes they've never felt part of the DDA district over the years. So I'm sure you've heard that too, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what what kind of feedback have you heard from the township about that portion of the project? You know, I, I think the township has some of their own challenges, but they like it. They, you know, in talking with Bill Dunn, I think the township is investing as well in Elgin. You're part of those. I think the township has plans for growth. I think you're seeing it in those uh, apartments up uh, behind um, Myers, uh, adjacent to Myers. I think the township understands quite well that the township will do very well as a township with a very robust and active downtown. Um, their residents are our, you know, are our customers, and our customers are residents of the town uh, and the township. So I think they are looking at it very much in the same vein, and that's why I believe they offered us, uh, before they found out that the state law doesn't allow it, uh, a grant of their own. And I think we'll find other ways to partner with them. Yeah, I believe their heart was in the right place there. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, downtown is very, very important to the township. There's no question about it. I, I don't think this village survives uh, and its downtown survives on 4,000 residents. And I don't think it survives on 11,000 if you take in the township. I think it survives and will survive because it's a regional draw. And, and because people of Metamora and, and Addison Township and others like what they see and they're comfortable there and this is where they go. And this is, this is why you do it and this is why you have festivals and this is why you have color and, and things and, and events um, that go on throughout the year. Um, and if you could just get it to stop raining on the days of your events. <laughs> I, I don't know if somebody has an in. Uh, but, you know, Scarecrow Festival, uh, I know one of the businesses doing October, Ox, Ox, Oxfest or something, Oktoberfest, um, and doing things like that. And that's what's going to keep your town vibrant, um, and that's what's going to get it to grow. Keep doing it. Okay. And what we'll do is open it up to public comments. And if I could, if you do have a public comment, um, we're going to have you go to the podium back there, state your name loud and proud, <laughs> and then uh, address your comment to uh, the chair. Lecture, thank you. Podium, okay. Podium is a raised platform to stand up. You've already exceeded the rules. <laughs> I have three people who expressed an interest in speaking. 
Having been called the names in random order, you'll have two minutes to address the boards. Please address your comments directly to the chairs. Please do not address the comments to any of the board council members directly. So first I have Ron Meyer. No point. Please state your name and address and then I'll start your time. Ron Meyer, 1700 Hummer Lake Road. I'm not a village resident, but I am a township resident. The first is, this is going to interrupt our businesses drastically. I've worked in another city where we put in major projects like this, and we were able to work and get it done around the clock. <laughs> if at all it is possible, can we consider pushing or asking the state the same thing? keep going around the clock. Instead of tying up the downtown for six mm -hmm. months, maybe we can get away with two months or whatever the timetable is. My second, you mentioned building damage. It's very important to address. I'm personally familiar with it happening when a government program came through. And the government never wants to step up and take responsibility. Your businesses do need to look at that. Next is you're talking colored aggregate. Make sure the surface is smooth. People who are handicapped using walkers, etc., have problems, will need a smooth surface. Trying to clean snow off of aggregate that is bumpy is very hard to do. You have another section where you have the trail or you have a island extended down in front of the park south of the center of the town. I think it's the one frame before this. That's encouraging jaywalking. If you take a look at it, it's not right at the corner. Nope, that's not. Next one. Good point. Okay. I think we had to go earlier. Right there. Right there. Yeah. You'll see how long that goes. You're encouraging jaywalking. In short, if you leave that island, that is on the south side of the, the main downtown that long, you're encouraging breaking the law. You want to be careful with that. There's nothing wrong with crossing at the corner, but you're encouraging people to jaywalk. Lastly, or not lastly, second to last, Pollyanna Trail comes through. Any way you can put a big parking lot or a spot where people can park and walk to the local restaurant, for their bicycles is good. I have friends who stop at Paint Creek. They stop at the Rochester, where they have an easy access on and off. We want to grab those bikers that might want to come in and have a sandwich for lunch or just a beer. I've already mentioned this, and that is the areas on the corners where people are turning have got to be as strong as the road because those trucks pull over the, the corners, no matter how hard they try, you've got to make sure that the state knows to make the corners, the sidewalks, as sturdy as the roads. Otherwise, you'll have the problems of constant replacement that we are currently doing with the brick. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Marianne Keynes. Good evening. I am Marianne Keynes, and I reside in the uh, Waterstone community, so I am an Oxford Township resident. Um, my only regret is that this uh, wonderful streetscape isn't extending all the way down to my particular area. I wish it would, because we can certainly use some left turn lanes and some reduced uh, speed limits and enhancements that uh, we see here in, in your um, proposal. But I do have a couple of comments I'd like to share with you. And the one thing I didn't hear about this evening, which I was hoping that I would hear, is that there was going to be a truck bypass because we're spending all this money and it is going to look lovely but i am at ray road and lapeer road right where that aggregate uh, company is and i can't tell you how many gravel trucks double haulers come out there we have stones spitting all over and we're really trying to slide and ruin our front lawn area because they don't have control that particular area is a bad turnaround 
for them. And so I hate to see all this wonderful effort be ruined within a year or two because trucks and overweight vehicles are going to be traveling uh, close to pedestrians again, even with this lovely streetscape. So I would love to hear that even if it extends to 2020, we have another year to try and work on that truck bypass. Um, also, I see that the parking spaces are still here. I know you can't please everybody, but as someone who's had to miss a couple, one, sometimes two traffic lights because someone's trying to parallel park, and they're either a newer driver or having difficulty fitting into that space and they're not giving up, sometimes <laughs> that parallel parking interferes with traffic flow. So I was hoping to see the tra um, parking spaces removed to allow more safety and more sidewalk space, which Sue elegantly gave in her presentation, we are gonna have a little more space. But sometimes even if they have to remain, perhaps angle parking versus parallel parking, it's easier for people to get in and out of. Also, I, I would like to um, echo what Mr. Meyer said. When I saw the medians, it concerned me because as Sue had spoken to me previously today, they have to be curb enough that emergency vehicles can go over. So hence, they're not gonna be a real enhanced median. They're gonna be kind of a be able to run over type of median situation. And I really worry about the kids coming out of the Oxford 7 Theater, folks coming out after having a couple of drinks from our wonderful eateries and running to that media and thinking they're going to be safe and during winter months and slippy road times I would really worry about those pedestrians standing there for another opportunity to run perhaps to the other half uh, uh, of the opposite side of the street. So that would be my concern. I'd rather not see medians and encourage those people to do that than have halfway, if you will, uh, median structures. Um, also, one thing that maybe might make us a little bit different with our streetscape is sometimes it makes us in the evening, for those of us who have difficulty driving at night in the evenings, is some kind of lane uh, reflectors. Perhaps the outer exterior lanes through the um, downtown area could have some reflectors to keep people safe away from the sidewalk area and give us a little more light because sometimes if you find yourselves in the wee hours of the morning going through downtown, it's rather dark. So I would encourage maybe food for thought. I know everything has an expense and a price tag, but that might be something you want to consider. Um, also, I, we heard about the trees, elm trees. I'm just going to throw in that perhaps something that flowers might be kind of pretty. Because flowering trees, I know the flowers and the petals create their own um, expenses and clean up and clogging drains. But sometimes flowering trees do look pretty in springs and, and in fall. Pear trees lose their leaves rather late in the season. So it kind of makes for a nicer, it's not too much of a mess during your peak Oktoberfest time frame. Um, also, um, I really like the idea of the lights because I miss holidays. So when she said, when Sue talked about those lights, I saw orange for Halloween, and I saw red and blue for Fourth of July, and of course Christmas lights, but I come from Rochester Hills, so nobody can beat that downtown Rochester big bright light show, right? So, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I mean, we can go there, but I only got two minutes, so I'm gonna keep going. But I really do see we could really do something exciting with the holiday lights uh, option. Um, and then, um, I really like to hear about the extra conduits for, for future. I'm even thinking by Centennial Park area. If that gazebo's gonna be lit, or we might develop the Centennial Park to be a little bit more um, evening friendly, then perhaps we want to do some conduit running under the road near Centennial Park to help that area out. And last but not least, um, okay. being from Rochester Hills, look, when they did downtown Rochester streetscape, they tore that street apart and they found a whole bunch of artifacts, wonderful things. So it might be good to keep a historian, keep our museum in mind, because you might find something, you might be sorry what you find. Sometimes it can put a, a stop to the work if you find human remains and things of that sort. There's a cease and desist type of thing. But um, you, you may want to just make sure somebody is aware of or what procedure in place, if something historical should be found, how they should proceed in order to um, capture okay. that. Okay, Marianne. I think you've exceeded your two minutes. Oh, well then, I, and I am through. Thank you very much for your time and the opportunity to speak. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Next is Tim Gibson. I believe Mr. Gibson uh, left. Left. I have no one else. Anyone else wish to speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Next, we have Council DDA discussion and motions. There's no discussion. I'm prepared to make a motion. I'll make a motion to move forward with the grant application as presented and move forward, forward with the process. Second. I will need motions from both the DDA and the Council on this. Do you want to complete Simultaneously? First, or? They can do theirs and vote on theirs, and then you can do yours and vote on That's yours. That's fine. All right. Okay, we have a motion by Helma, supported by Frost. Let's do a roll call, please. Drew? Helma? Yes. Frost? Yes. Start it? Yes. Motion carries. You guys have any discussion? Down here. My only discussion would be to thank the people who put this together. Susan, nice presentation. Mm -hmm. Just and then Evan for you and Gwen for both explaining things. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ditto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll move to approve that the village submit the TAP grant application and move forward on the streetscape project. And I'll support that. Right, so motion by Nichols, second by so motion by Nichols, seconded by Charles. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I think she said she couldn't hear the motion, so if you would want to reread it. Please. Just no. reread it. You don't have to reload. No, okay. Just reread it. <clears throat> Go ahead. Did you want to read it? Okay. So we have a motion to move forward with the village uh, TAP grant application as submitted. Thank you. You didn't have trouble hearing me, Connie? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's down here. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. So next we have just the comments amongst ourselves. So others? Yeah, council and DD comments. It was a lovely presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Nice a lot job. of work went into the board. Everybody, thank you. Good yes, job. Works. I like how I just yes. said thank you. You did a nice, nice, very nice presentation. I've been going through okay. the process under the uh, task force group for the many months in the past. Um, I think this is the right thing for the village. As was pointed out, it might be 50 years before anything happens again. It's a great opportunity for the people of this uh, village. Madam Chair. Um, just to reiterate, <clears throat> great job to the staff and the volunteers who've made this possible for the DDA. Uh, I will uh, mention one um, thing of disappointment, um, and that is that I thank you from our township residents for your comments, and those are, are, are um, enlightening, and we will study those issues, and I, I think both of you bring uh, you know, great perspective on both of these. But this evening in a public uh, meeting, we've not heard from a single village resident. And so I would uh, like to reiterate to the village citizens um, that this is probably one of the defining moments in this village and this downtown's uh, uh, time frame in the, in the early part of this 21st century, and yet uh, our, our village residents are not fully engaged. Um, that's no fault of anyone here. Um, it was in the paper, it was in the, in the Oakland Press, et cetera, social media, et cetera. Um, but I would encourage my fellow citizens to get engaged. Thank you. Do you have any comments? Thank you as well. Very nice presentation. Dorothy yeah. covered everything. Sorry, I need to speak over you. Oh, I said you covered everything. And very nicely done. Thank you. Yeah, Madam thank President, you. if I can, I, I would like to thank the members of the committee. They put in a lot of hours on this. Uh, DPW, police, fire, the township uh, representatives. Brian came to many, not all the meetings. Um, the people who put in, and, and it is just the beginning of this process. So I thank everybody who who did have a hand in it, the DDA, who has been through a couple of iterations of this, and the citizens who uh, I, I know will enjoy the benefit of it. As I've said earlier before, planning is hard, but it's probably the easiest part of this. Uh, it's the living through it 
that's going to be tough. And please make sure that you patronize those businesses. They're going to need your support. More businesses aren't here. Um, I want to thank all of you guys for coming tonight. The comments that were made, I make note of all of them. Some are doable, some are not doable. <laughs> right up front, I will say that. Um, I want to thank all the committee members, the M24 Task Force, who continues to work on this, but um, they've given up time out of their busy lives to come to numerous meetings, and at one point we we're meeting every, every week. So I want to thank all those people for participating with this. Um, and again, like Evan recognized, the DPW, the police department, the fire department have all been integral parts of this plan and coming up with things. Um, I want to recognize Chris Corey, who has been working diligently. Uh, he's a village planner, and he's been working diligently with the uh, businesses and residents along where we needed right of way. Um, and had, we've had numerous meetings with privately with them and with MDOT in group meetings. And I also want to thank Joe Frost because um, we started down this path a couple years ago when Joe just started and he's had numerous pre-meetings with MDOT and getting things lined up. He was very instrumental in getting the historical uh, grant so that we can be a historical district getting that started and finally it's coming to fruition this fall and we'll get started on that. So, um, and I want to appreciate Evan for all your input. Susan, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you've been very patient with us in honoring our requests and redoing plans and everything and I really appreciate it. And finally, I want to thank the DDA and the council for your motions tonight and support of this project. And that's up. So I will. Do we have any further public comments? Anybody want to say anything? May I add something? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't write my name on this oh, card. I'm sorry. But, uh, it's okay. Most of you know who I am. I'm Brian Clute here. I'm director of the Oxford Public Library. Um, was involved in, in the committee uh, in that work. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I just want to congratulate everybody up there because um, this is the first time in, I think, 11 years that I've been your library director and involved in this community that I've actually seen progress happening at this level. Um, progress has always been happening, but not at this level. This is the first time that I've seen groups from various boards and committees and our local government officials actually moving forward in a positive way, communicating with each other, uh, and, and it's, it's a great thing. And I hope that we keep this momentum going um, because it is only a healthy thing for our community. So thank you. One final thing I want to do is thank Brian for opening up this room for us tonight. Um, he had to do some juggling to move a class, and thank you for taking care of us and getting that set for tonight. We appreciate it. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 725. It's not 725. 715. 715. Support. Okay. Because we're withholding your support. So we have one more comment. For record keeping purposes, can people who attended and are in the audience sign out at the door. It's not required if they want to be in the Okay. Room. Usually we put usually we make um, that part of the notes. So if it's not required. One final comment also. For you folks that didn't attend here, a lot of people are absent. You can catch this on O C T V. Our very own local television station. There's a motion on the floor. Yes, we have a motion by Helma, supported by Frost. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Sorry, I thought you guys had done that. So we need to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 No? No. I can see you. All together. <laughs> <laughs> Show them Bye. 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 <laughs>